All right, we're ready to begin lesson nine, and we have two new sounds and letters to be introduced to. We have Vav, which looks familiar to us because we've seen this shape before with a dagesh or a dot right here, and it acted as a nikud, and it made the sound oo. But when there's no dagesh, there's no dot, it becomes a consonant. It's its own Hebrew letter, and it's the Hebrew letter Vav, and it makes the sound V, as in very. And then this looks familiar as well. This looks like a bet, except there's no dagesh. There's no dot in the middle. When there is a dagesh in the middle, um, it makes the sound b as in boy. But when there's no dagesh, it also makes the sound v as in very, just like vav. Okay, and let's look at our new vowel. Our new vowel, these two dots here, is called a shva and it's silent, and it ends the syllable. And I know we've talked about that some people don't consider nikudim to be actual vowels, but even among those who do, most do not consider the shva to be a vowel at all. It's just kind of a bit of a placeholder to help you with your syllables. And so we go up to our two key words, and so we can see that our syllables, this is going to be a two-syllable word. It's going to split right here. So we're not going to close the syllable right here and consider this a nikud, but we're going to close it after the shva. So the word here is meets va, meets va, and then this. This is also this is going to be a three-syllable word. This is a syllable. This is a syllable. And this is a syllable. And I've been taught, you see how under the hay there's no nikud, it just ends? I've been taught to regard that there's an invisible shva, that this is invisible right here. This helps us know how to end it, that any letter that doesn't have a nikud has an invisible shva underneath it because it's silent. So right here, this is going to be hav da la, havdala. And now we're going to move down and we're going to read our little story so we can know what these words are about. And let's make this a little bit closer. There we go. It says, on Saturday night, we say goodbye to the holy day of Shabbat by saying four blessings. This short service is called Havdalah, which means separation. During the service, we use all five of our senses. We hear the blessings, smell sweet spices, and taste wine. We see the flame of a braided candle and feel its heat on our fingers. It is a mitzvah, a commandment, to make Shabbat special. It is also a mitzvah to join in a Havdalah service. Every mitzvah brings us closer to God. Every mitzvah makes us a partner with God in fixing the world. Okay, so now we're going to go down... Keywords once again are mitzvah and havdalah. And now they want to give us some practice with the shva. You've actually already done this. Anytime we did work before and we uh, had a letter with nothing underneath it, it was the same as a shva. There was no niku, just like here. But they want us to get in the practice of, of understanding that. And it really, the whole purpose of learning the schwa like this is to help you with your decoding, help you with your, uh, your pronunciation when you're reading Hebrew. And so um, this is, if this is not your first time learning all of faith, this is really important skill to pick up. If it is your first time learning all of faith, remember the key is learning the letters, their names, and the sounds that they make, and some basic decoding. And you can work on your accent and picking up up, um, tweaks to help your um, your decoding um, as you go. Okay, so number one, we have yalda. You see it's those two syllables. So imagine a, an invisible shva there. Then we put it together, yalda again, and then yalda here, and there's the shva, and it just lets us know that's the break in the syllable. One syllable, two syllables. All right, two, we have patcha, patcha, Patcha. Three, we have pitcha. Pitcha, pitcha, with the shva right there. Four, we have mikdash, mikdash, mikdash. Five, we have nakdish, nakdish, nakdish. Six, we have natnu, natnu, natnu. 
Okay, so now have a little more practice. They're going to kind of try to switch it up on us. So at seven, we have lambda, limda, lamdu, and yep, they're going to kind of trick us. This is a three syllable, la mod nu, la mod nu. Okay, eight, shamra, shimra, shamru. And the three syllable, shamarnu, shamarnu. Nine, gamra, gimra, gamru, gamarnu, gamarnu. Okay, and our cool Hebrew, our cool Hebrew word is Mitzrayim or Egypt, Mitzrayim. Okay, now we go, and we know mitzvah and havdalah are key words. Okay, they want us to know that the um, patak and the vet, this makes the sound av, is the same when you have a patak, a yud, and a vav, which means that the yud here is going to be absolutely silent. Av, av. Obviously, you don't hear any kind of y sound, so the yud is completely silent. And once again, if you're if you're used to some Hebrew and you've uh, you've learned the Aleph Bait before, all of these um, um, practice uh, phrases that we're going to read right here, unlike earlier in the series, these are all actual Hebrew words. So if you want to work on some translation, that's also something that you could do. But if you're brand new to learning Hebrew. I would stick to trying to um, learn the Aleph Bait. And then you can either go back or as you go into learning um, uh, basic Hebrew words and phrases in the future, um, you're going to interact with these words again. Okay, so we have Av, Rav, Tzav, Kav, Shuv. Two, we have Vav, Valad, Sav, Kav, Shuvi. Three, we have Aval, Avir, Zava, Zavur, Zavar. And notice the Aleph is also silent. Let's scroll down a little. Okay, we have. Vadi, Vadut, Varid, Vatik, Vadui. All right, five. Shalva, Tikva, Kifta, Nivra, Vayikra. Six, we have Mavdil, Mitzvat, Ahavta, Ahavti, Ahavtanu. Seven, Banav, Raglav, Rachamav, Taktav, Zadikav. And our cool Hebrew words are anaknu, meaning we, and hatikva, the hope. Remember, ha is the, tikva is hope, hatikva, the hope. Um, just uh, be aware that the shva is really important to help, once again, with decoding. Um, I am one that I have found after I learned the basics of Hebrew. I still would struggle, and, and people would compliment my reading, and they would say, oh, you're doing really well. And I would still struggle sometimes when I was reading from the Torah or reading from a prayer book with my pronunciation. And a lot of times it was learning how the Shva acts in a word that really helped me kind of nail uh, what I needed to say. And I'll give you an example from the activity. Um, the words here, ahavta, ahavti, ahavtanu, 
Um, this particular word, the root word, ahava, the way it's used means to love. The way it's used um, in different prayers, I would often find myself stumbling over, and it was learning really what the purpose of the shva is uh, that helped me with my pronunciation. And so that's just one of those things that if you're learning Aleph Bait, you stick with that. If you kind of know Aleph Bait and this is a review, then that can help you learning these rules can help you with your pronunciation and help you decode better and then also faster as well. Okay, so we go to our next page. Okay, so they want you to practice uh, writing the, um, the vet and the vav. And then it's here it says circle every letter that makes the V sound. Well, of course, what would I have you do as well? I would have you practice reading all of these out loud. So, Bari, Shivuk, uh, uh, Ravak, Bashan, Kanu, Lavinu, and just kind of practice with, uh, with that. It's good practice skills as well. Okay, and I will say... I think that this activity here can be a little difficult, but it's good for kind of sounding things out and thinking. It says, braid the Havdalah candle, connect the syllables to make Hebrew words that are also used in English. Use the clues on the right. And I'm going to see if I can make more of this fit on the screen at once. Maybe. Okay, so... They have Hungarian, a language, and so they have Hun. And then I have to scroll down all the way at the bottom, Garit. So Hungarit is how you say Hungarian in Hebrew. Okay, lunch outdoors. They give you the first part, Pik. And then it's going to be Nik, Piknik, Piknik. Okay, separation, we've learned that today, Hav. Dala, hav dala. For your hair, you use sham pu, sham pu. A commandment you learned today is mitz va, mitzvah. The first Jew, so you have to have a little bit of knowledge here, would be av raham, av raham. His mother laughed. You have to have a little biblical knowledge there. That would be Isaac, which in Hebrew is Yitzchak, Avraham's son, Yitzchak. Ten Jews praying, have to have a little more knowledge. And ten Jews praying would be a min yun, min yun. An ice house, igloo, igloo. And a spring month up, and it's all the way at the top, April, April, April. Okay, we go now up. We got a little conversation. So we learned last time that ata means you for a masculine. So if I'm speaking to a masculine person, to a boy or a man, I would say ata, you. If I'm speaking to a girl, I would say at. Ot, you. Okay, remember, this has to do with whom you're speaking with or to. It's not has nothing to do with who you are. So you don't say, well, I'm a male, so I say a ta, or if a female says at, it's who you're speaking to. So they want you to fill in the blanks with a ta or at in the person's name. So we start here. The boy's pointing. He says, a ta, you are David. You are David. She's pointing, and she says, at. Gila, you are Gila. Then she's pointing to her and she says, At Miriam, you are Miriam. He points at this woman whose name is uh, Varda, and he's, what would he say? Would he say Ata? No, he'd say At, At Varda, you are Varda. Then he's pointing at this man who's named Uri. He would say, Ata Uri, you are Uri. She is pointing at the boy reading the book, and she's going to say, Ata, you, Ata, are Yitzach, you are Isaac. Okay, he's pointing to this kid named Chaim. What's he going to say? He'll say, Ata Chaim, you are Chaim. She's talking to this person named 
Aviva, she's going to say at Aviva. You are Aviva. Okay, and oh goodness, we have a lot more vocabulary. We have, let me see, let's get a little closer. There we go. So we have uh, mishpacha, which is family. We have bar mitzvah, which is a bar mitzvah, ceremony for a boy. And we have bat mitzvah, ceremony for a girl. And bar means uh, son in, I believe, Aramaic, actually. And bat, we know, means daughter. So son of the commandment, daughter of the commandment. And... They want us to write the letter in each picture next to its matching sentence below. Okay. So one says, Dag ba mishpacha. Fish, dog, in the family. Okay. So... There are more sentences and pictures. We don't see that. And obviously that wouldn't make sense. Two says, Mi babayit. Who is in the house? Is there a picture that reflects that? Ah, bait. Bait would reflect that. Okay. Three. Aviva bat mitzvah. Do we see a girl having a bat mitzvah? We do right here with vav. Okay. Four. Mishpacha babait, the family's in the house. Well, that would be hey. Five, Abba babait. Do we see just the father in the house? Nope, so that one's not going to work. All right, six, Mishpacha babayim, is the family in the water? Well, I think Aleph would qualify for that. Seven, David bar mitzvah. Do we see a boy having a bar mitzvah? That would be Gimel. Okay, eight. Hagir tachat habayit. Do we see chalk underneath the house? No. Nine. Chala babayit. Do we see a chala in a house? No, we see a chala there, but it doesn't say anything, it doesn't show anything about a house. And then 10, chala bayad, ah, the chala's in the hand. We see that with dalit. Okay, and this is good practice for just decoding and reading out loud. All right, we got to prepare for prayer. It says, Hebrew words often come in families. Every member of a Hebrew word family has the same root. Most Hebrew roots have three letters. Members of a Hebrew word family all share a related meaning. Read the words in each word family tree. Okay, so we have Ahav, Ahava, Ahavti, Ahavta, Ahavtanu, and this means loving. And they want us to figure out, okay, so what would be the, the root letters? It would be Aleph, He, and Vav. And the reason these are roots, so to be loving, Ahav, Aleph, He, and Vav, that's loving. But each of these letters mean something. So Ahavti means, when you see this, it means I have loved. Ahavta, you're to love. Ahavtanu, we love. And so you'll learn what some of these things mean as you uh, progress in your Hebrew studies. But knowing the root, knowing that um, Aleph, He, and, and uh, uh, Vet means love will help you figure out the meaning of a word. And then you'll learn like the um, prefixes and suffixes that tell you um, what exactly is being said. Okay, so we have Kiva, Hikva, Makva, Tikva, Hatikva. And we should probably know what that's going to be. That's going to be Kuf, Vav, and He. And that means hoping or hope. Okay, so now we have Mavdil, Hamavdil, Havdala, 
Havdil, Havdalta. And the root there is going to be Veit, Dalit, and Lamed. And that means to separate, to be separate. And I think that's it for lesson nine. It is. So we have one more lesson left. One thing I want to show you real quick. Here's the Hebrew Aleph Beit. There are only 22 letters in the Hebrew Aleph Beit. So you notice here it says Bet, and it shows the Dagesh, but it shows that it can make a B or a V sound. And the reason I'm showing that is because the idea of taking the 22 letters and breaking them apart and giving making letters based off of the sounds that they make. So instead of just saying, okay, there's a letter that's called bet, and if there's the dagesh or the dot, it makes the B sound, and if there's no dagesh, it, it makes the V sound. About 30 or 40 years ago, um, some institutions, and I believe it's mostly an American thing and mostly a non-Orthodox, um, non-Orthodox Jewish educational idea. They took all the different sounds that the letters can make and they, they gave them their own name. So you just used to learn bet and you learned that it can make two different sounds. But then people started saying, okay, bet makes the b sound as in boy and vet makes the v sound as in very. And they kind of separated that. And I think that's really, really intelligent and smart to help kids learn the sounds of the Hebrew letters initially. But you have to remember the idea was that you would go beyond that. And it's just really important because now that idea is often also used to teach adults Hebrew when they're learning the Hebrew Aleph Beit. And what you have to remember is that people who were raised with this often weren't raised learning Hebrew in that manner. And so I've seen this particularly with, with, with bet versus vet. There is actually no such thing as the letter vet. There is no such thing as some of the letters we're going to learn in the future. They're actually just sounds that one letter makes, but they change the name of the letter to reflect the sound, to, to not confuse people when they're reading the Hebrew letters. And like I said, it's really, really smart idea, especially for children. But we have to remember it's only within one context. I don't even think in America Orthodox Jews are raised this way because I have several um, uh, resources that are used to teach Orthodox children Hebrew, and they also don't do that. I didn't learn it this way. I learned the Aleph Bait by learning the 22 letters and the fact that sometimes certain letters make one sound and certain times they make a different sound. And that was just the way it was. And I remember the first time I was sitting in a synagogue in an introduction to Hebrew class and they were um, doing the letters and they would bring in these um, the sounds that some of the letters make and they would give them their own name. And I, again, I think it's that's a smart way to help people pick up the sound early on. But you just have to remember that technically there's only 22 letters in the Hebrew Aleph Bet, and just sometimes one letter makes different sounds, whether or not it has a dagesh, or if the dagesh, as we're going to see in the future, moves around and moves around the position that it occupies on that particular consonant. So just keep that in mind. I would, in fact, I, I think if you're learning Hebrew, you should print off the Aleph Bet. And just have it somewhere to look at and just kind of look and say, okay, do I know the name of that letter and what sound it makes? And uh, so when you see bet, you can say, okay, it makes a b sound if there's a dot or a dagesh in it. And it makes a b sound uh, as in very if there's no dagesh. And just remember that. And I don't know why, and I didn't even think to, to talk about this before, but we're not learning the letters in the order in which they appear. Uh, this is the order of the Hebrew Aleph Bet. Go, you know, going in this order. That's the order. Um, but no resource that I have that teaches Hebrew actually goes in the order of the alphabet. They they go with different combinations. Um, Aleph is not the first one they teach, obviously, because it's silent. But um, uh, and usually Beit is one of the first ones that you're taught. But I, I the resources I have use different combinations. But it's just good to remember. Um, that the Aleph Bet is a set order, just like we have our ABCs in English and other languages have their alphabets. It is a set order, and there's only 22 letters. Uh, so just kind of have that in your mind. Um, so as you as you grow in knowledge, know that not everybody has been taught um, in this particular context. Like I said, I think it's mostly American, 
mostly non-Orthodox Jewish um, institutional um, kind of policy, and it's only about 30 to 40 years old. Uh, and like I said, it's a great thing. It's just you don't want to, as an adult, and I assume most people learning on their own like this will be adults, you don't want to um, assume that that certain things are true that are not. You don't basically, you don't want to look ignorant and other people may assume that you don't know what you're talking about and it's not your fault and it's not their fault. It's just one of those things that people don't realize like, oh, this is a way that they've been, they started to teach children in a certain context. So just be aware of that. And uh, like I said, and I, I even thought of that today, I thought, you know, we haven't actually talked about the fact that we're not going in the order of the Aleph Bet and none of the resources I have that I've looked at for teaching Hebrew actually does that. But it's just something to be aware of because normally you'd be in a classroom somewhere and you'd have the Aleph Bet posted on the wall. Well, we're doing it kind of in a different format. So just print out uh, the Aleph Bet and just have it up somewhere and just walk by and point out the letters you know. And once you go through this, just when you're walking by, you look at it and you say, okay, uh, you know, pick a letter. What's the letter called and what sound does it make? And just to help you. We have one more lesson left in volume one, and then we are done with this particular text. All right, that's all for now.